to Jewish channels we can review. Shocking vandalism at Yad Vashem, explorations of Sephardic music, Israel's vice prime minister visits the U.S., and more of the Jewish news that's changing your world right now in this episode of the Week in Review. Hello, and welcome to the Jewish Channel's Week in Review. I'm Stephen I. Weiss. What industry is home to many of the wealthiest Jews in the world? You might guess large American successes like banking, technology, or media. But would you ever guess the rabbinate is where a great amount of wealth is concentrated? That's the suggestion of a new list from Forbes Israel, ranking the richest rabbis in the Jewish state. The top 13 rabbis listed are reported by Forbes to have a combined worth of more than 3 billion shekels, or roughly $750 million. Leading the list is Sephardic Kabbalist Pinchas Abu Chatzera, son and heir to Elazar Abu Chatzera, who was murdered last year. The younger Abu Chatzera's fortune is said to now stand at roughly $335 million. Number two on the list is his uncle at $194 million. Two other Abu Chatzeras are lowered down on the list, bringing the total family worth to $445 million. Two grand rebbies of the Hasidic world round out the top four on the list. The Gera Rebbe at $90 million is number three, and the Belzer Rebbe at $46 million is number four. There's one woman on the list, Bruria Zvuluni, reported to be worth $5 million. She comes in at number 13. Of course, women in Israel are hoping for greater inclusion these days on many more lists of religious leaders and for a greater role in official religious life. This week came news that women are officially allowed to deliver eulogies at funerals, though each woman who hopes to do so must be approved by a community rabbi on a case-by-case -case basis. The ruling from Israel's chief rabbinical council concludes a process that started with an Israeli Supreme Court ruling in 2006 that women should be allowed to deliver eulogies. One might think that funerals are one place where inclusion and tolerance can be seen as universal values. One might think another place where inclusion and tolerance are to be expected is Yad Vashem, Israel's Holocaust Museum and Memorial. But vandals this week spray-painted messages that have to be seen to be believed. Thanks, Hitler, for the precious Holocaust you prepared for us. It is only in your merit that we received a state from the United Nations, reads one message signed at the bottom, the Global Zionist Mafia. Another says, if Hitler hadn't existed, the Zionists would have invented him. Says another, Zionist sinners worthy of punishment. You declared war on Hitler in the name of the Jewish people. You brought the Holocaust. A total of at least 10 slogans were found. Authorities believe the anti-Zionist vandalism was produced by ultra-Orthodox extremists. Meanwhile, a message of tolerance from Israel was greeted with less than unanimous approval here in the United States. In honor of Pride Month, the Israel Defense Forces posted a photo on Facebook of two male soldiers in uniforms holding hands. The photo drew approximately 8,000 Facebook likes and was shared more than 6,000 times on the social network, but some IDF fans here in the U.S. were less than pleased. They included Bill DeGeorge of Moreno Valley, California, who commented, If Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob could see this, I think they would be turning in their graves with shame for them. Meanwhile, where Israeli values of tolerance are running up against American conservative supporters' social outlook, the Republican Party in New York State has made a surprising choice to represent itself to the Jewish community. Yossi Gestetner is a public relations professional in the ultra-Orthodox world, and he has consistently tried to put a positive spin on controversial stories from that ultra-Orthodox world, including the arson attack by the ultra-Orthodox assistant of New Square's leading rabbi. That attack was against a man who was a member of the community because he attended prayer services outside that mainstream community. He's defended alleged child rapists, and he's also defended efforts to smear their victims as opponents of the Jewish community. And now the New York Republican State Committee has named Gestetner its director of Jewish outreach. In a press release, they write, Mr. Gestetner has been a resilient voice for conservative values and Republican ideals. Israel's Vice Prime Minister Silvan Shalom visited the United States recently, and TJC's Meredith Gansman found him at a meeting where he addressed American Jewish leaders. Israel's Vice Prime Minister Silvan Shalom addressed the Conference of Presidents today and no surprise it was Iran's nuclear programs that was the hot button issue at hand. Preventing Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons is of top priority for Israel's Vice Prime Minister, but he doesn't necessarily agree with his colleagues about the best way to do that. I personally believe in sanctions, not like let's say many uh, in the Israeli leadership. 
But I believe in sanctions because sanctions worked against uh, South Africa and they brought the regime down. They worked against Libya and they forced uh, Gaddafi then to uh, abandon his program uh, to develop a nuclear bomb. It works with North Korea and it even affects uh, Iran these days uh, in a very crucial way. Also speaking at the conference was Dr. Aaron David Miller, a public policy scholar at the Woodrow Wilson Center, who disagreed with the vice prime minister that sanctions would stop Iran's nuclear development. It's, it's proven in the case uh, of Iraq, or frankly, any time sanctions have been tried, if you could impose truly nation crippling sanctions, you'd thereby punish the entire Ir Iranian people and undermine their institutions of governments, a blockade, a boycott on basic materials, maybe. But we're not going to do that. The United States is not going to do that. The Europeans are not going to do that. The Russians and the Chinese are not going to support that. So short of that, you can't bring the bear enough pain as a consequence of sanctions to fundamentally deter the Iranians from the course that they've they've taken. Miller, however, was equally skeptical that military action would stop Iran from going nuclear. And frankly, even a military attack in the end is only, it's akin to someone described to me mowing the grass. You mow the grass and guess what? The grass is going to grow back. The vice prime minister explained that the need to stop Iran's nuclear program is getting even more dire, with the Iranians getting closer than ever to the capacity to make a nuclear bomb. Because they moved to enrich the uranium from 3.5% to 20%. And you should know that to move from 20% to 90% is much easier than from 3.5 to 20. It looks that from 20 to 90, it's much more difficult. It's much easier. And they are even there over 20 now. To hear more from the Vice Prime Minister of Israel, tune into the full broadcast version of the Week in Review. Exploring Jewish culture through music are two musicians who've tackled the Sephardic heritage. Rebecca Hodig Friedman has that story. This summer, the sounds of Spain can be heard on two very different new albums by two very different Jewish American women. TJC caught up with both of them to find out what drives their passion for Spanish and Jewish culture and heritage. Sarah Arawesti, whose newest album is called Gracia, writes contemporary music in Ladino, the traditional language of her Sephardic ancestors. My mother's family is originally from Spain 500 years ago, but then after the Inquisition, they made their way towards the Ottoman Empire and ended up in Greece and Monastir, which is now present-day Macedonia. About 13 years ago, Aroesti, who is a classically trained opera singer, decided to make the switch from opera to singing in Ladino, a hybrid language rooted in Spanish with influences from Portuguese, Italian, Greek, Turkish, Arabic, and other Mediterranean languages. The story I tell people is that I would incorporate Ladino classical songs in my opera recitals and without fail, after every single performance, audience members would come up to me at the end and tell me that the Ladino portion was their favorite part. And after a while, I, I agreed with them. For Sarah Erdi, who just released her first album, Ride, with her band Caramello, Spanish roots are much more recent. Of Eastern European descent, Erdi developed a connection with Spain as a child growing up Jewish in Brooklyn. I um, started dancing flamenco at the age of six at Ballet Hispanico in New York. Our neighbors, the Martinez family, they went, so we did everything they did, so we went. And I told my mother when I was six, I said, don't ever let me stop doing this. I just love it. My soul, my six-year-old soul. Went like, Ole! And Urde never did stop. She makes her living as a flamenco dancer and a choreographer for the Metropolitan Opera. And even though she isn't Sephardic, studying flamenco music and dance in Spain during childhood summers and for six years as an adult also provided an opportunity to connect with Jewish history and culture. Flamenco has a lot of Jewish influence because the Sephardic Jews were in Spain, <laughs> you know, for so long. And even there in secret, of course, after um, the expulsion. And there's a lot of flamenco lyrics about the Jews and there's a lot of um, melodic influence. For more on these musicians fusing Spanish and Jewish culture together, watch the full broadcast version of the Week in Review. 
Finally, for an in-studio interview this week, we're discussing something very new in a tradition that's very old. A new translation of the Talmud is being published by Karen Publishers. It's a new English translation that works off of a previous Hebrew translation by Talmudic scholar and expert Rabbi Adin Steinsaltz. It has a number of interesting new twists. And I'm here today with the editor-in-chief of this project, Rabbi Tzvi Hirsch Weinreb. So, Rabbi Weinreb, who is this Talmud for? This, uh, this Talmud is for the beginning Talmud student who wants to learn how to learn. It's a study aid. For it to be a beginner version, that's a pretty big investment to, to, to do one, one volume. You know, I think it adds up to something like $1,400 uh, total to get all 41 volumes. The, the student here is the, literally the beginning student who has no background, whether it's a child learning time for the first time in grade school, mm -hmm. or whether it's an adult who, for adult education reasons, wants mm -hmm. to know more about the Talmud. Uh, and what the edition does is it provides the person with an entirely new set of perspectives. Um, if you open the volume, mm -hmm. uh, as I like to do, uh, you see all sorts of interesting things. But one of the things that I'm uh, most proud of, and this is really in the original uh, Steinsalz Hebrew as well, Besides the actual Hebrew text, mm -hmm. and besides the English translation, which is a new translation from scratch, in the margins, you have five types of notes. Mm -hmm. You have a note which gives you background about the personalities. Mm -hmm. So for the first time, any person, whether it's one of the rabbis, whether it's one of the Gentile kings, whoever it happens to be, the first time that person is mentioned, you will have a several paragraph summary of that person's life, when he or she lived, uh, what they were all about, what the major themes of their teaching was, and you can put everything into context. You'll also have a note telling you about the background, the culture of the time, the way people dressed, the way people ate, the foods people ate. Um, so you get that type of context. And, and similarly, there are other perspectives. So even if you're a, a veteran student, you're going to find something new, not just a new fact here or there, but a, a, a new way of looking at the Talmud. The thing that stood out to me immediately after I, uh, after I started reviewing it last week was just how you really could read the entire thing in English yes. and, and never read anything but English. Yeah. You, you could choose to do it in any one of a number of ways. Um, if I may, mm -hmm. if you open the book the way you would open a Hebrew book, right. so the first thing you find is the traditional Vilna page. So if you really want to study... And this would be the layout of the page as it was done in the, the layout 1890s. layout page I was done in the 1880s. Right, and that, and that this is completely untranslated um, with commentaries on the sides. Right. That's the this way it's been done this for is the authentic, plus years. Exactly. This is the way it's done in every yeshiva, left to right. Uh, this, is, this is the Talmud. This is the, the classic page. However, if you open the book from the other side, mm -hmm. so then you get the Talmud text... Mm -hmm with vowels and punctuation marks. However, you also have it set aside so that every sentence or paragraph or every single idea mm -hmm. is separate with white space in between. One of the things that so many people, especially beginners, children, high school age kids, find really tough, when you look at this page, it, it's just a lot of, uh, a lot of stimulation. This is right, too much. Right. It's overwhelming. There's something everywhere. Yeah. Something everywhere. Yeah. Here, you, you can focus. Sometimes it's just a two-line comment. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a four-line comment. But it's broken down so you can uh, follow it. And, of course, the English is right next to the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. So you can go from one to one. Mm -hmm. um, the English language is, interestingly enough, wordier than Hebrew. So four or five lines in, in Hebrew takes eight or ten lines in English translation. Mm -hmm. It's been a pleasure. And that's all for this week from all of us here at the Jewish Channel. Be well. The Jewish Channel is available on cable. Time Warner Cable Channel 528, IO Optimum Channel 291, RCN Channel 268, Bright House Channel 330, Verizon Fios Channel 900, Cox Channel 1, Frontier Communications, and now on Comcast Cable in the on-demand menu under Premium Channels. For more information, visit TJCTV.com.